Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see fourth-year quarterback Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys as they match up with the second-year man Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. With that, let's get up to M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. There to call all the action. We welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, some might say it's cold. Others, like myself and my partner, we say this is football weather as we welcome you to chilly M&T Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore. The two teams emerging from their respective tunnels a minute ago to the approval of this Baltimore crowd. They're all set as their Ravens will match up with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Brandon Gaunt along with Charles Davis. Charles, good matchup here. A couple of playoff teams from a season ago. And just think about how the NFL works, partner. Eight teams that made the playoffs the year before didn't make it last season. So there's always going to be parity in this league, and guys have to be ready to go. Just because you made it the year before doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get back again. Here's Kai Forbath now to get us started. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So Lamar Jackson in his second season, the Heisman Trophy winner of 2016, leading the Ravens onto the field. First down, it's Jackson. They go screen. This is Ingram. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. And a very good offensive unit here. One of the reasons they're so good is running back Mark Ingram. Took a little while for him to find his footing when he got into the league, but the former Heisman Trophy winner has it now and has really upped his pass receiving potential. A nice player. From the 22, here's second and eight. They go to the former Saint, Mark Ingram. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. And now the defense for Dallas. Robert Quinn is one of the better defensive ends in the league. Six and a half sacks in 2018. But he had a three-year stretch with double-digit sacks from 2012 to 2014. When he's at peak physical condition, He's a handful to handle for an offense. A tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. From the gun, Jackson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Back deep, a Baltimore native, Tavon Austin. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. So here are the Cowboys under head coach Jason Garrett as they get set for their first opportunity. They'll be led out by the former Mississippi State product, the mobile quarterback, Dak Prescott. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 22. They run with Ezekiel Elliott, last year's NFL rushing leader. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And on this offensive unit, your thoughts on Travis Frederick? He's a quarterback's best friend, sets all the line calls, and blocks so aggressively. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Get ready, get ready, get ready. 
Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And he hits Jason Witten, the tight end. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before Let's being go, corralled. Let's go. 17 yards on the play there, and the Cowboys have a first down. Boy, you got to think that having the 37-year-old veteran Jason Witten back at tight end is going to be great for Dak Prescott for plays just like that. And you think to last year when Witten wasn't there, it was kind of a rotating carousel. They had Blake Jarwin, Jeff Swaim, Rico Gathers, Dalton Schultz. But Witten back out there and doing his thing again. First down carry by Elliott. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And here are the Raven defensive starters. Let's go to the middle of the Baltimore defense where Brandon Williams holds court. And we often talk about how difficult it is to stop a big-time runner. How about trying to stop a big-time guy in the middle who wreaks havoc both with pass rush and against the run? Brandon Williams went to his first Pro Bowl at the end of the 2018 season. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Here's Elliott. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, there's nothing but room to run. Third and long for Prescott. He can run for it, and he will. And an alley to run. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Able to find a lot of empty space there, picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. That's something you have to be aware of as a defense and have to find a way to account for him. And if you're not going to use a spy, you're telling your guys to keep your eyes on him because when he breaks out and makes plays like that, all he does is hurt you. Have to at least be able to contain him somewhat. There they could not. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 41. They'll run with Elliott. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They'll try to throw now. Prescott. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Here's Prescott. And he's able to hook up with Michael Gallup and all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. A big third down pickup of 20 yards. They're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in, with the, in the production meeting with them to talk about this and, hey, you know, how are you guys going to come out of the gate? I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't I, seem to I want it. I didn't offer mine. You, know, you, were, you were the <laughs> smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. from the red zone now. Prescott stepping up. He'll try and run. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. On second down, Elliott. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. 
A five-yard gain there makes it first and goal. A tough run by Ezekiel Elliott, the fourth overall pick in the 2016 draft. If you watch tape of him in college, you saw plenty of those runs because I know the highlights showed him in the open field breaking away from people, but that's how he wore down defenses, those exact type of runs. Able to push his way through. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. From back at the four, here's second and goal. A run for Tony Pollard, the Memphis product. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Well, they're knocking on the door as they come to the line here on third and goal from the one. Throwing, Prescott. Touchdown, Dallas Cowboys! An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we've got to turn it all loose. Kai Forbath on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-0 Cowboys. So that drive spans 13 plays, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Forbath to send it away now following the touchdown. This fielded at the two. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys are a little bit I don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. Just like us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and out. have that opportunity. Uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'm trying to do better here. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. Check, 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 check. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. From the gun, it's a run for Ingram. One yard, the official pickup there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. On third down, Jackson. He's got it to Ingram, complete. Ingram churning, he lost the football.
Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt, not too shabby. Here's the Dallas offense now, heading back out onto the field. They have to be thrilled with that first drive that got them the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice, in meetings, talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here we go. Throwing on second down, Prescott. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. But well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and 10. Complete to Jason Witten. 17 yards on the play there, and the Cowboys have a first down. The last time we saw Jason Witten on a football field instead of the broadcasting booth was, of course, two years ago, 2017. He had 63 catches, 560 yards, five touchdowns. It was his 11th Pro Bowl that season for a man who came into the league back in 2003. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On the counter, Elliott. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instinct. Being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. They'll try and run for it with Elliott. And Elliott trying to work his way forward, but it looks like he did not make it. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. Back deep is DeAnthony Thomas. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up the first down and change our momentum? The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Eight yards on the run, and that cuts this down to a third and about five. 
but you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. And on third down, the Cowboys bringing an extra defensive back. Hey, hey, tight ends right. Watch tight ends. Four down, four down. From the gun, it's Jackson. And he's got Snead. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Out of the gun, they give to Ingram. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Xavier Woods, the free safety, up to make the tackle. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, Ingram. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. Now Jackson on third down. He can run for it, and he will. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 40. Everyone in this stadium knows Jackson can do that as well as any QB in the league. They talked about limiting some of his running this year, especially the design runs, but he's still going to scramble when he feels he has green in front of him. He led all quarterbacks last year, 695 yards rushing. And keep in mind, 80% of those came in the seven-game stretch when he was named starter late in the season. So from Cowboy territory now, here's first and 10 right at the 40. He'll wind up getting four down to the 36. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. And now Jackson will look to throw it. He'll get this to Edwards out of the backfield. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Jackson from the shotgun. They'll buy some time right. He may try and run for this. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Jackson always a threat to run. He's got the first down. He was the NFL's leading rusher among QBs a year ago. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. First red zone chance now for the Ravens. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. They run from the pistol with Ingram. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. A loss of two there, second down. 
I enjoyed watching Robert Quinn in pregame warm-ups with you down on the field. Did it surprise you how tall and angular he is? You wouldn't think he'd be able to play against the run that well, would you? But he can, and he showed it right there, didn't he? That's that wrestling background he has. He understands leverage as well as anyone in the game. A big-time wrestler in high school. He didn't lose very often. Three-time heavyweight state champ in South Carolina. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. On third down, Jackson. It's complete to Snead. And he's going to come up well shy of the first here as the tackle's made right around the 12. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. Tucker's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. Tucker named the league's all-pro kicker for the third time in 2018. Go ahead and admit it. The only time that you get excited about Justin Tucker kicking is when he actually misses. It's and excited is not the right word. Surprise is more what we're talking about. 90.1% coming into 2019. He's incredible. Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. This to Jarwin. The completion good for three, and it's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Tenth carry now for Elliott. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Oh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. The Cowboys on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and nine. Prescott from the gun. He's going to find Gallup here complete. 14 yards. Good for a Cowboy first down. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Prescott looks to throw on first. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, 
Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Prescott over the middle, and it's incomplete. Michael Gallup, that's who he was looking for, and now it's third down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback, but when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and 10. And again, it's Prescott. He can run for it, and he will. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled, but now they face a fourth down. I like this effort there. He got it done on his own, but let's face it. He puts defenses in a really stressful spot when he takes off and runs because a lot of guys have coverage responsibilities. Good job of rallying, though, because I thought when he first took off, he might pick up the first down. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it on, sails baby. out of bounds. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones not having balls go through goalposts. Now this one to his running back out of the backfield. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. They run, it's Mark Ingram. He finds an opening past the 40. There goes Mark Ingram past the 20. They're all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Mark Ingram, 74 yards. And the Ravens have taken the lead. They blitzed defensively there, but he was able to slip through that first layer, and then he was gone. I think they won the leverage game, didn't they? Yes. Right? They saw the blitz coming. That got to him a little bit, but they leveraged it perfectly and found not just a crease, a gigantic hole. And off he goes, and he's still going all the way to the end zone. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And the long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. Kick it away following the touchdown. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And let's gaze our attention on Ezekiel Elliott. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense is doing a nice job against him today. When it's all said and done, it's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to get it done better going forward. See if he can look and do some soul searching now. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. 
Big... Draw play, Elliott. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Brandon, when you and I sit down and play chess, you're always winning. So I've got to figure out how to get that done. But we're watching a real chess match today between the offense and the defense. And on that play, call the draw. The defense ended up winning. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Let's it fly deep for Cobb, and that'll be incomplete. Now they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Ooh, the juke. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They're starting to put some space here. The first quarter, they didn't look so hot offensively. This second quarter, though, they've looked really good. They've jumped in the saddle in a big way now, and now they're in full gallop. I mean, before, kind of cantering around a little bit, right? Trying to feel their way, not getting done what they wanted to. But somehow they put it together with play calling, execution, and now there's a pretty big gap. And they'll look to make that gap even bigger here. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. Well, Sneed figures to be an important veteran presence for Lamar Jackson. Two years ago, it was a disappointing 2017 for Sneed. That was in New Orleans. But then had a bit of a bounce-back campaign a season ago in his first go-around with Baltimore. 62 catches, 650 yards. Did have surgery in the offseason on his left index finger, but back to full health and ready to go. A 10th carry here for Mark Ingram. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Leighton Vander Esch, third in the NFL in tackles as a rookie last year there on the stop. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. From the 44, Jackson. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. The Ravens on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This time, it's third and three. Throwing is Jackson. And he couldn't hang on. Almost an interception there defensively. Instead, it brings up fourth. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. This will be spotted just shy of midfield. A 59-yard attempt. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. These kickers now it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration. Now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Tucker now following the main field goal set to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. 
And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Dallas offense now, heading back out onto the field. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now Elliott. And he works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Prescott from the gun on third. Looking for Cooper and it's intercepted. Picked off by Patrick Amwasor. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43 yard line. That's where they'll take over. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. We shift our attention to Mark Ingram. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has, and that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games, maybe we need to up that a little. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there, but there's gotta be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on and they can run it back inside later. Flashed the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. Baltimore was the most run-heavy team in the league last year after Lamar Jackson took over as a starter. And you think about Mark Ingram. He goes from a situation where he was sharing time with Kamara in New Orleans. Now he figures to be the top guy in the Baltimore backfield. Although I guess you could say he's kind of splitting time with his quarterback, Lamar Jackson. But a great veteran presence, Mark Ingram is behind Jackson. Ingram now in his ninth NFL season. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. They had two tight ends in the formation on that when it looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield. I think he was just planning on going over the middle. That's what he did. Picked up first down, too. tuck it and run. A little second effort there on the strong run. And then drop just inside of the 20. He'll pick up seven there on the first down keeper. Oh man, that wasn't far from breaking in a big way into the secondary. Read option, quarterback kept it. And while he didn't get a first down, he did get a nice chunk of yardage. Only a nice tackle prevented it from maybe going all the way. Throwing on second and three. Jackson is going to find his tight end, Boyle. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and goal. 
But with the kind of half he's had, I think we can forgive him that run, right? Not every run's going to be a big play, is it? No, and also the blocking just wasn't there. No room to run. Yeah, defensively, they got to find a way to build on that because he's eating them alive in the first half. It's second and goal. Back to the eight-yard line now. To throw is Jackson. And this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. Touchdown. Seth Roberts there to make the grab as the Ravens push further out in front. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor in effect. Now Tucker to add the PAT. And the lead is now 13. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Dak and the Cowboy offense heading back onto the field. You know, normally he's probably pretty happy with his performance at this point. He's played pretty well. Bottom line, they're down on the scoreboard, so I'm guessing he's not that happy. No, the fantasy owners who have him for this week, oh, they're happy with what's going on. But for him leading a team, trying to win a ball game, I agree with you. Not happy at all. Trying to figure out how to up his game and inspire his teammates to do the same. That's a true leader. It's a gain of 12, and the Cowboys pick up the first. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. And this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Prescott. And that's caught inside the 35. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 36 yards on the play. Obviously, they're not where they want to be right now on the scoreboard. Big plays like that, though, that'll trend them in the right direction. Yeah, a few more like that, they'll be right back in the game. And if they can continue to do that, maybe they'll inspire their defense as well to get a few stops. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. He's got the connection to Cooper. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion. So here's second and four. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football.
We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. To throw again on second down. Prescott completes it to Jason Witten. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Give him 10 there, good enough for a Cowboy first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because there should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Prescott to throw it. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. A second down throw for Prescott. And his throw here is incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Prescott yet again. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. And Forbath will put this one through. And that cuts into the deficit. It's now 20 to 10. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Mark Ingram now gears up to help lead this offense back out there. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Here's Jackson. This one complete to Ingram. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson, Sneed's got it. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Jackson now, 13 of 16, throwing the football. It's first and 10. 
from the gun. Jackson sliding out of the pocket. He's going to take off with it. And he's got a first down and then some at midfield. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. Normally we're talking about a quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this for both of these guys running the ball well? Yeah, they've mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks <laughs> have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. Short throw into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Final play of the half here, it's Jackson. And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. Brings us third down and eight yards to go. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point, and you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. No running room for Zeke on first down as he'll maybe get a yard out of that. Marlon Humphrey with the tackle defensively. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. On second and nine, Prescott got his man there complete to Gallup. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Michael Gallup. 
55 yards as his guys are back within a single score. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Formath to add the extra point. And the lead will shrink to six. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it culminates in a Dallas touchdown. Forbath to send it away now following the touchdown. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Jackson on first down. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. This is Ingram. And a good burst there, gets him seven, up to midfield. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. From midfield now, here's Jackson. That's caught by the former Sooner, Mark Andrews. And he's gonna have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys 40. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. This is Ingram on first and 10. They'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 
Well, they had a gain of 10 last time, now a gain of 20 here. And this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. First and ten, it's Jackson. Out right, this is Boyle, the tight end. And he's brought down just outside of the ten at the eleven. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard. Leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now a first carry for their fullback. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. They've definitely established a rhythm on this drive, moving the ball quite well. And big man with football is an integral part of the whole thing. They come out here in the eye. They'll run here with Ingram. And he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Mark Ingram, his second touchdown of the afternoon as the Ravens push further out in front. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give him a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. John Harbaugh thought about it, and now his guys are going to go for the two-point conversion. Jackson from the shotgun. And he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. Kick it away following the touchdown. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive tummy. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. They'll try and get the running game going with Elliott. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. From the 31, Prescott, and that's Elliott, complete. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. The defense loves to hang their hat on that, don't they? You get a guy that catches the ball, but you stop him for no gain. Without a doubt, because they're also used to trying to catch people after the catch, and they miss. And that turns into what? A huge play. We've seen it so many times. In this case, though, catch was made, put down right on the spot. Here's Prescott, complete to Jason Witten. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Dak fighting his tight end, Witten, and the Cowboys have a first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Here we go, here we go. Double time, double time. Three down, three down. Hey, check, check. 
Fighting! Fighting! They go back to Elliott. He's been busy. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. To throw is Prescott. He's going to find Gallup here complete. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. a second and two after that last catch good for eight yards now Prescott oh a scrap for the football and he's going to come down with it and he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 25 yard line there are so many things to watch for when you play defense and reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. They'll run on first down. It's Elliott, and he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. For Zeke, what a first three years he's had in the NFL. Last year, his second rushing title, 1,434 yards. Not as many as 1,631 that he had as a rookie, but still his yards per game average was the best in the National Football League. On second down and four, Prescott. They'll roll him out right, and he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. Offensively, they liked their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tuck it and run time, and he picks up a first down. First down, Prescott. That one complete, Elliott. That really sets him back, a loss of six. Well, that wasn't exactly a thing of beauty. I know they completed the pass, but look at the yardage lost. I mean, who does that make happy? That's why I don't play in PPR points per reception fantasy <laughs> leagues right there. You'd be really You don't deserve upset, anything right? for that. But you get credit for it? Is yeah. that how that works? Yeah. Well, I know whoever has this team's defense, they were happy about that play. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. They get just a yard back there, and now they'll be looking at a tough third and 15. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Prescott from the gun. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. No gain at all on the play there, and that'll bring up fourth down. They couldn't get anything going there out of the right side of the flat of the swing pass. And didn't we have a discussion with their staff about wanting to get the backs more involved in the Big passing emphasis. game? Huge emphasis for this game, but obviously the defense had other plans and really made a nice play. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. And Forbath will put this one through, and the drive will wind up yielding three. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle, right? No big plays given up, no balls over your head. Bend 
don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Uh, you like Come that on, one? what does that mean, break out the, just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Four bath now to kick it away after the made field goal. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25, couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called. Because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second and 10 now from the 27. Hey, watch the slant. Now Ingram, he's been busy today. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 10 yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. It's been a remarkable day at the office for him running the football. Those yards just continue to pile well past 100. And how about more than double digit carries in the second half alone? That's what you want as a runner because you've got to prove to your offensive line that you're gonna be as tough as they are. They don't rotate in and out on every play. Running backs often do, so those who can stay out there with their offensive linemen, those are the guys they really value. Ingram again, a first down carry. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not gonna go anywhere. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. But there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. Jackson. They go screen. This is Ingram. And he can only get this to the 42-yard line. And that is not near enough. Well contained there defensively. The screen gets only a yard. And it's fourth. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Here's Sam Cook now, as he's on to punt for Baltimore. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And out now come the Cowboys. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I think they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Now second and seven from the 23. Again, it's Elliott. And he'll be taken down right around the 27. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. And that will be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. He's been terrific so far. Averaging 50 yards a boot so far as this one's away. 51 yards on the punt there. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. This Ravens offense heads back out there, led by Lamar Jackson. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start. This defense, they made some good adjustments, so he's fallen off since. You have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing them all sorts of trouble. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down, get to the fourth quarter, try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. And a 20th carry now for Ingram. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Ravens on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This will be third and five. From the gun, it's Jackson. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Jackson now a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and 10. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, they have had success when he keeps the ball running it, but not in that situation. I mean, I think we got an example of why NFL coaches really don't like their quarterback in the running game. Because whether he keeps it or not, he's likely going to take a hit, isn't he? No doubt about it. And defenses, they're looking to put that hit on a quarterback. On second and 12, Jackson. This will be caught by Brown. That one covers 29 yards, first down. Nice big gain there from Marquise Brown, first round pick out of Oklahoma. Of course, his cousin knows a thing or two about big catches in the NFL. That's Antonio Brown. And now Hollywood hoping to carry on the family tradition of solid production at the wide receiver position. So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. You have to have two inbounds in the NFL. Play. 
Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the player or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration, not a good play. The penalty moves them into the red zone here on first and ten. I can't believe they let you play. I can't believe they even let you play. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. It's picked up by the Cowboys. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Partner, that one looked like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game, so hold on here, not done in the fourth. Here's the Dallas offense now, heading back out onto the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And it's picked up by the Ravens. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drive. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there. And I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory. And, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't. Because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it's real hard to put it back on and mash it. Because once everyone's emotions come down, hard to start them up again. So I think you may want to keep them cranking high right here. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. On first down, it's Ingram. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. To throw is Jackson. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. From three yards out. And the Ravens have used the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. Tucker now to add the point after. And the lead is up to 18 now. A drive there of just four plays. And it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown.
Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over. The other team takes it down and scores. That could be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Let's go, D. It's going to be a long day, offense. It's going to be a long play. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And this is caught by Witten, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 15 there, and the Cowboys have a first. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Give him 10 there, good enough for a Cowboy first down. down carry by Elliott. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. On second and very short, Prescott. And down inside the 15 he goes. Give him 15 there, and the Cowboys have a first. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. First down, Elliott. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Defensively, you've got the nice lead here in the fourth quarter. You're saying, eh, if they want to get a run of a little over 10 yards, that's okay. <laughs> I hear what you're doing there, and I think you're on to something. They've loosened up on defense, so don't get fooled by the nice runs you're getting now. You've got to get bigger plays possibly think about throwing the football a bit more here. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. And this is going to be intercepted. It's the former Seahawk, Earl Thomas. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Now that turnover might just about do it. Here, fourth quarter, the lead that you've got, they can just run the football, run the clock. Exactly right. They played smart, a couple of first downs, and this one should just about be over. 
They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Now it's Ingram. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Seven yards there at a first down. Brendan, every great running backs coach I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about running them into submission. Uh, he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. A pretty good-looking run there on first down. That'll go for nine yards, just short of the line to gain. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Didn't get to the sticks, but that's an ideal carry there on first down, isn't it? I mean, now you're second and one. Although, you know, in the NFL, even if you picked up the first down, I don't think it's a big difference because the clock doesn't stop. Yeah, not like college. Right. If it's college football, you want to second and one is probably better than picking up the first down because in college football, the clock stops with every first down and actually aids the defense in that situation. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 41-yard line. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. So from Cowboy territory now, here's first and 10 at the 41. Ingram. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit them over the top. 54, right there, right there. 54, Mike. You ain't going nowhere. Ingram again. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Jackson looking to throw on third. It's complete to Snead. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it, it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of the first down. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And that will stretch the lead up to three touchdowns now. It's a 21-point game. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. 
Dak and the Cowboys ready for their next possession. And that interception that ended their previous drive likely also ended any shot they had at victory. Yeah, long road back from here, no doubt about that one. But let's face it, if you're going to go out there and compete, you want to try and end on a strong note, don't you? Absolutely. It won't end in a victory, like you said, but they can maybe take something positive out of this one. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. The last drive, remember, similar situation. He forced a ball into coverage through the pick. He learned better there. Yeah, similar to a golfer that's confronted with a shot that you just can't make. Sometimes you have to take your medicine, as they say, right? Just pull it down, take off, and go. Don't make something worse than what it was. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Prescott to throw it. Completes it to Jason Witten. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. They're giving those short little routes. Tackled him in bounds, too. They're just not wanting to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes. But now you've got to have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Throwing. Prescott. Got his man there complete to Gallup. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. It's a gain of 16 in the Dallas first down. Clock management definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. Looking to throw, Prescott. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away and it's second down. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. The Cowboys' all-time receptions leader, Jason Witten, the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, yeah, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? No, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. And he's able to hook up with Michael Gallup. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. First down, it's Elliott, and he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. They go to Elliott again. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got it first and goal as they look to punch in a late score. Prescott, now he's got it. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Cowboys get a bit closer. 
I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. yeah, you know. Doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Forbath able to convert the extra point, and that will get him one closer. Two scores down, two timeouts at their disposal. This is a critical onside kick. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. They'll run on first down. It's Ingram, and he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Whistles now and a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 1.51 left. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. Jackson steps away. He may try and run for this. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. That is an absolute backbreaker. That was a design passing play, wasn't a draw. You think you got him stopped, good coverage downfield, and he's able to pick up the first with his legs. Defensively, that kicks into your psyche and hurts a little bit, doesn't it? It certainly does, and, and here's the thing. Anytime you give up a first down, it hurts you psychologically, but it hurts more when they get it this way because you've covered everything. He didn't have any place to throw the football. He takes off running and picks it up anyway, and now you have to stay on the field for an extra set of downs. And really could have used that stop trailing here in the fourth. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Here's Ingram. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day, and he'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. Down to a knee goes Jackson, and that should seal it. A 
Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.